Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to my channel. When I first made the video about Thundercat's roar, pointing out all the problems with that, the conversation kept going for a number of days, of course, and I heard some of the same silly arguments against any of us who were opposed to that, so I posted a second video just addressing the arguments, and that one proved quite popular as well. I'm seeing the same thing now happen with the She-Ra argument. I've seen on my YouTube channel, on my Twitter, as well as anybody's platform who's spoken out against this nonsense representation and whatnot, we hear the same arguments. And these arguments are desperate. Supporters of this new androgynous, politically charged, nonsense representation of She-Ra have resorted to the most desperate, almost schoolyard mentality level arguments. So I figured I might as well address them here in one video since everybody seems to be hearing these. Let's take a look at the first most glaring. They love to throw this one out first because of the shock value. They're hoping to shut you down. They don't want you to continue to point out logically what's wrong with all of this. They want to shut you down so they throw out the word pedophile. Or if they don't say that word exactly they hint at it and use some kind of crass language to insult you about being either sexually turned on by the animation or by young children or whatever. I saw one comment that was actually phrased just like this. It said, She-Ra is 16, so explain to me how you're not a pedophile. That is the most insecure, desperate statement. It throws out the straw man and then tries so hard to forcefully make you combat that straw man. It's desperate not to have the argument that you're actually having. It wants you to to become the straw man that it can easily knock over. So let's look at this general idea that's there under the many incarnations and the ways people have expressed it. There is a difference. I've said this in my last video, but it doesn't matter how many times you say it, people just don't want to understand it. There is a difference between sexualizing and idealizing. And I don't know why this SJW mindset has so much trouble with this concept. They simply must conflate the two. This is the type of mindset that thinks that every man who stops on the street corner to talk to a child is obviously just a pedophile waiting for his moment. It's a sick worldview. It's obsessed with sexuality. No one that I've heard or read who's arguing against this animation and this representation of She-Ra, who wants a more feminine-looking character design, no one that I've read is asking for this in order to be sexually turned on. I've never seen that in the language whatsoever. As I laid out in my video, it has to do with mythological symbolism. And lastly, let's examine this idea that she's just 16. She's not 16, she's a cartoon character. So she is not bound by any rules of physics or natural law as to what a natural person should look like. Secondly, what world do you live in where a 16-year-old girl has to look like a 10-year-old boy? That's absurd. That's simply not the way nature works. And being 16 years old might as well be 30 years old to the child watching the show. A 16-year-old is practically an adult to the child watching. It's that romanticized teenage space the children long to fill themselves. So again, it's this idea of trying to paint it as though a bunch of dirty old men want a 16-year-old character to sexually stimulate them. It's, it's nonsense. But the opposing side can't be bothered with that silly logic. It doesn't fit into their straw man that they can more easily combat, so they like to go that route. I've also seen arguments and people saying, it's about practicality. She's going to be a warrior. She needs more armor. And if that is an actual heavy plate, of course it would suppress some of her curves and this and that. It's, you have to be practical. You know you're watching a cartoon about a girl who has a magic sword and transforms into a supernatural hero. What practicality do you think you are owed in a genre like this? It's nonsense. This is mythology. It shouldn't be practical. Practical shouldn't even enter into it. It's not realism. Now, there are certain rules you have to abide by. You can only stretch suspension of disbelief but so much, but that hardly comes into play here at all. Our mythological heroes, from the cave paintings to comic books to cartoons, have always been idealized and placed in the adornments which best symbolically represented their natures, not which best practically met their needs on the battlefield. That's ridiculous. Another tactic they take is, this isn't for you. 
this cartoon's not for you, you dirty old white middle-aged man. This is for children, and children like this type of thing. This one misses the entire point as well. Cartoons, comic books, television, movies, they might have a certain demographic, but they are not for one group of people to the exclusion of another. You can concentrate the marketing, as I said, on one demographic, but no franchise, logically anyway, is going to exclude anyone from patroning it. A story like she which has seeped into the public consciousness, at least of the fans who love the show, it's not an overall permeating cultural thing, but the entire Masters of the Universe saga has come to mean quite a bit to the fans who grew up with it and loved it. This is more than just a children's cartoon now. It's a mythology that has helped to shape us and done all of the work that mythology should do. So even if it was true that any cartoon made today is not for any adult and they should never ever watch it, even if we accepted that false premise to be true, we can still make all of our arguments based on the fact that this representation and this presentation of the story and of the character is detrimental to the youth of today. It is not going to shape them in the way that mythology should, in the way that the original series did. It's absurd to simply say, it's not for you, so you can't understand it. If that was the case, then how could the person making that argument understand it, unless they were a child on Twitter, although many of these proponents act quite childish. The fact that these shows and these stories do operate as mythology, or should operate as mythology, plays into another point. And that's usually a last-ditch effort in these arguments. It's just sort of tacked on to the end of a tweet or a comment. And this is the question of, why are you making such a big deal of this? This is really what you're spending your time on, and so forth. Well, again, there's a built-in critique of the actual person posting that comment or tweet within itself. If it's worth time for you to combat my argument over, then it's clearly worth my time to make the argument in the first place. But that's beside the point. The point is that, yes children's cartoons are a huge deal. They're going to shape the next generation, especially cartoons like She-Ra, like these franchises that shape so many of us. I don't see what's so hard to understand about these being hugely important to us and being a subject of which people can show a great deal of passion over. As I said, I really see so much desperation in these attempts to shut down any critique or resistance of this new She-Ra series. I saw it as well with the Thundercats roar, but nowhere to this degree. And I think it's because the seminal issue here has more to do with the third wave feminism and that worldview that people are desperate to preserve and push and for it to be unquestioned. When people are that desperate for a viewpoint to be unquestioned, that's a red flag right there. It tells you that there's problems with it. People don't have the faith in their subject matter or in their arguments to actually proceed with them in any sort of logical way, so they will try to shut you down by calling you names, trying to associate you with some sort of cultural taboo. This is just basic, base human nature, and quite asinine. The Fan Man and I will discuss this as well, because the Masters of the Universe franchise meant quite a deal to both of us, so we'll discuss that in our live stream as well if we can sync up schedules tonight, 8pm, so tune in if you're free. And until then, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the hero stories you love. Thanks for watching.